Hey you guys. So today's video, I wanted to sit down and talk about some beauty favorites. I have quite a few in front of me and if I had to say there was a theme of this favorite, it would be basics, but not your basic basic, the good kind, just good foundational products that I think genuinely, yeah, pretty much anyone would try and love. Before we get started, make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. Come hang out with me on Patreon. And if you're new here, subscribe. You know you want to. And if you're not new here, hey, what's up? How's your mama new? All that being said, let's get started. Give me a thumbs up if you like the quick intro. I'm trying to get faster about it. So I'm gonna start off with skincare and I'm gonna start off by giving you kind of an update on a product line that you have heard me talk about on YouTube for about a month now. Now, I recently did a sponsored video with this particular brand using this particular line, and just in case you guys missed it, or just in case you thought I was on some bullshit because it's a sponsored video, I thought I'd give you an update and tell you how I'm feeling currently about the MetaHeal NMF Intensive Hydrating Line. This is the moisturizer. I have featured this in a favorites video. It was in the video I partnered with MetaHeal on, and I just thought I would let you guys know how it's going. This is how it's going. I would bathe in this stuff if I could. It is such a beautiful, beautiful formula of moisturizer. It goes great under makeup. It looks beautiful by itself. Your skin will just drink it up. It's that perfect combination of intensely hydrating, but not heavy or goopy. It's not gonna make you greasy. It's not gonna, well, it doesn't break me out, which is saying something because everything breaks me out. It's just beautiful. And same thing with the serum. It's almost gone. I love this stuff. I get asked all the time what my favorite skincare is, what my favorite affordable skincare is, and hands down, period.astronaut, it is the MetaHeal NMF Intensive Hydration Line. I will leave some links down below. Check it out. You got nothing to lose. Super reasonably priced, incredibly effective. Love it so much. So speaking of skincare that I absolutely love, I wanted to talk about these. These are called the Zeo Skin Health Complexion Renewal Pads. I've talked about these already. I mentioned them in my skincare favorites video for a while ago, but in case you missed it, and more importantly, because I think it bears repeating, I felt the need to talk to you guys about these. This is my third tub of these, guys. I bought the first one, I think it was like late spring, early summer on a whim. I was at my local med spa, you know, getting a tune up as you do. And one of the girls um, kind of saw me sniffing around the skincare line and she said, hey, you should try these. And I really didn't see any other contenders to choose from that were like catching my eye. So I picked them up, really didn't have high hopes. But let me tell you something, my skin is absolutely addicted to these. There is something in this product that makes my skin never break out. I don't know what it is. And I knew how much my skin liked these and how good it was at keeping my skin clear, but I still let kind of a two week period lapse between finishing my last tub and picking up a new one. And I could tell I started breaking out a lot and my breakouts were taking a long time to go away. But something about putting these skincare pads in with the rest of my complexion routine, I don't know. I, I have smaller pores, my skin is brighter and glowier, and again, no breakouts. Now, I do use Retin-A, and I also sometimes use Retin-All. So it's kind of bizarre that as much as I am kind of exfoliating my skin, if you will, or, or increasing that cell turnover, that any more exfoliation could potentially have beneficial effects at all. You would think that what I'm doing now is enough, but I was still, I'll still break out unless these are in here. It's the craziest, craziest thing. And I, I've never really believed people when they talked about kind of an over-the-counter product changing their skin, particularly around breakouts. But I'm a believer now because this one in particular has changed my skin forever. And apparently I can never not have it in my rotation because it's so effective. They're just like kind of those OxyClean pads from the 90s, if you guys remember. Just these kind of things. Side note, I broke my nail yesterday. I was not gonna delay putting this video up because I needed to get my nails fixed, so just live with it. But yeah, they work incredible. If you find yourself in a situation where maybe you're trying a lot of things and you're not seeing those results with exfoliation or breakouts, I would recommend these. I will leave some places you can get them down below and I will ask Bella Med Spa, who does all my work, if they will ship it to you. And if they will, I'll leave that info down below too. Anyway, 
Thought I would mention them because they are truly a lifesaver and I have been loving them so much this year. Next are the Fenty Cream Bronzers. These have been showing up in my actual videos. I don't think I have sat down and talked about them necessarily and kind of told you why I like them so much or anything, but these are filthy, don't judge me, but I will say for the better part of over a year or so, I have been using the Fenty Matchsticks and I went to go repurchase them as I was running completely out, like this is all that's left in this guy. And when I was on Sephora looking for them, I noticed that they weren't carrying all of the colors. So I don't know if they're discontinuing these or doing something different on them, but I did notice that the exact same colors were found in the new, or at the time, the new Fenty Cream, Bronzer, Cheek Out, Cheeks Out Formula, whatever. I love these things so flippin' much. In fact, they are much preferred over these sticks now. I'm so glad that she made these into compact form. One of the things I really did not like about, it's so filthy, every time I look at it, I'm a little embarrassed. Um, one of the things I really did not like about these in particular was it was really hard to get the product onto the brush and get it to blend smoothly because you kind of need to like warm it up a little. That looks really vulgar. <laughs> You kind of need to warm it up a little bit. Um, the, the formula apparently is done in such a way that it'll never dry out, like if you leave it uncapped or something. But the downside of that is it's not very emollient unless I kind of dispense a whole lot of it on the back of my hand and get it nice and juicy and then pick it up with my brush. So that was always something I didn't love about this. And that problem has basically been fixed with the fact that they are now in these little compacts. These are incredibly easy to use. They're very, very, very blendable and they turn into like a powder. They, they dry down a little bit to like a matte finish, which is wonderful whether you're oily or more dry because the creamy element still kind of gives that blendability and really melds into the skin. But even once it dries down, it's not dry looking. It, it still has a nice like real skin like sheen kind of glow to it. I love these things. I have been on a cream bronzer, cream contour kick for about a year. I know a lot of people think that it doesn't really make much of a difference at the end of the makeup application. I can tell a pretty big difference since I've started using these than just like straight powder bronzers and things like that. In fact, I'm gonna be doing a grown folk complexion routine uh, next time I film, which is in two days. So if you have any particular questions or things you want me to talk about in my updated complexion routine, you know I'm detailed AF. Um, but if you have any extra things you would like me to talk about, make sure you leave that information down below and I'll try to get to it. But yeah, the Fenty cream bronzers are my favorite cream bronzer probably ever, I think. Yeah. Next I want to talk about jewelry. I cannot say that word, you guys. So get ready for it. I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to mispronounce it the whole time and you're just going to have to love me through it. Um, I want to talk about some jewelry because I get asked about my jewelry all the time. Typically, I'm wearing jewelry from a few different places. So like, for example, this is Miranda Fry, this is Amanda Deer, and this is from Etsy. So I just pick up jewelry wherever I find it. Um, there's tons of brands I would love to try. Lately, I have really been wanting to try uh, a brand named Jenny Bird, and I've also recently got into Melinda Maria, is that her name? She does a lot of really funky jewelry and earrings, and I've got two pairs of her earrings, and I really like them. Speaking of earrings, I didn't get my ears pierced as a grown-ass woman until last year, and I have been having so much fun playing with earrings and different types of styles and layers. All that being said, I'm gonna tell you guys about some earrings I bought off Amazon recently that I am incredibly impressed with considering the fact that they were so inexpensive that I wanted to share them with you. So the first ones I wanna tell you about are these little kind of Hailey Bieber kind of hoops. You know what I'm talking about? She wears like those smaller kind of chunkier hoops. When I first got these in the mail, I did not think I was gonna like them very much because they almost look like a pirate's, like, you know what I'm talking about? How they have like the one hoop. Didn't think I was gonna like it, but I wore these in my last video, which I will leave down, down below. And when I was watching it back, I was like, those earrings look really good. Like they look expensive. They're lightweight. They're not super chunky and heavy and uncomfortable to wear. They come on and off really, really easily. The good news about these on top of everything else is that they don't irritate my ears. And I have kind of sensitive ears, I think. I bought some Target earrings at one point last year, like some studs just to wear all the time. And they really like hurt my ears. It was bad. So 
I don't know if it was just that particular brand or what, but I have been a little cautious about what I buy and I make sure that when I buy any earring that it's either plated with 14 karat gold or it says that it can be used for sensitive ears. And these did not irritate my ears at all. And I think they're super chic and on trend and cute. And they're the type of hoops that like are comfortable and realistic for every day. Sometimes a bigger hoop I feel like really only looks good when I'm doing something. I don't know. That's not actually true. I feel like you can do nothing and have a cute earring stack on and you just look like you really like tried to put yourself together. My point is these are dope. If you're into this kind of vibe and this style and you don't want to spend a grip on them, I will leave them down below for you to check out. Same thing with these. These are those little like, uh, what are they called? They're not huggies. They're cuffs, earring cuffs. They're super popular right now. And I love them because like I said, I want more earring holes and I don't have them yet. And I can pop these in different places and it gives the appearance of extra ear holes. Now, these in particular are not the easiest for me to get open and shut because they are so well made. You kind of have to pry with them a little bit. I have another pair of these type of earrings. These are from Melinda, Maria, like I told you, whoever makes these. These go on and off super easy and they stay well. These aren't the best, but if you can get them on, they look so good. They look really good and expensive. I have another pair from Amazon that are kind of like this that I bought. I ended up giving them to my daughter. I will leave them to, down below as well. I found them a little bit easier to use than these, but again, if you're kind of into this like chunky kind of 90s vibe with your earrings, these are two great options. And then two more. These are Huggies, which are also really popular right now. And I like them a lot because they kind of give you that um, effect of something going on, some little dangly interest, but they're really lightweight and they look good with everything. You guys have seen me wear these earrings, I bet. Hold on, let me find the other one. You guys can probably go back in my videos for the past, I don't know, month and see me wearing these and these nonstop. They're just like tiny little hoops that they go in your ear in your ear holes and they just add a little something. They layer really well. They're comfortable. Again, I have worn these nonstop, like not taking them out at all for weeks at a time and nothing. They haven't irritated my ears. I've worn them in the shower. Side note, my kid is so psycho about earrings. It's hilarious. Every time we talk about them, she's like, do you take them off before you get in the shower? And I'm like, no, she's so diligent about that stuff. I am not that person. And these haven't rusted. They haven't turned. They still look really, really good. Again, I will leave them down below. I didn't know Amazon was uh, kind of going on like that in terms of jewelry, but apparently they do. Next, I have like five products from Buxom. No, four. Four products from Buxom. It just worked out this way, okay? Buxom recently came out with these like 90s nudes lipsticks. I have all of them, but these are the ones that I have been wearing. I can't attest to how the other ones are, but these two, I can. This is Heartthrob and Fly Girl. Not gonna lie, the first time I saw these, I was like, oh, Jaclyn Hill was trying to do this and y'all just took it right from her, girl. It's just these beautiful, I know a nude is a nude is a nude, okay, blah, blah, blah. But I haven't been switching up my nude lipstick game basically all year. I have been wearing uh, Mel Thompson and the Christian Audette Beauty lipstick since literally last November, nonstop. So it's a big moment that I'm switching it. And I like both of these so much. One's more brown, one's more pink. I mix them together. I wear them on their own. The formula itself is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's comfortable. It's hydrating. It's not a flat matte, but it's not so shiny that it looks glossy. It's just like right there. Typically, I'm not the person to talk about nude lipsticks and act like it's some big deal you need to go out and buy more of, but I like these a lot, a lot, a lot, lot. So the next two products from Buxom uh, are great products themselves, but I think it's just this color that they're apparently really famous for. And as much as I love Buxom's line and use their stuff, I've never tried any of their dolly stuff. Like I said, it's, it's their thing. NARS has orgasm, Charlotte Tilbury has pillow talk, and apparently Buxom has dolly and I've been sleeping on it for a while. I am obsessed with this friggin' color. So first is this blush. This is the Wanderlust Primer Infused Blush. I have several of these, but this is the one that I've really been pulling for the most. First things first, I do remember when these first came out and I feel like I saw them everywhere. People were talking about them. I don't know what they were saying about. I just saw them like on the grid and shit. I get, I get why these are so popular. This is one of the only blushes 
one of the only blushes I have ever used that stays on my cheeks and stays on it for a long time. Typically when I do blush, I can put it on, like I kind of have to do it twice when I do my makeup. <laughs> I do the first pass when I'm getting ready and then maybe I'll go get dressed and check my hair and by the time I come back from that, the blush is gone and I gotta do it again. Not the case with this. I put this on, I don't know, I've had this makeup on for like an hour and a half. I can still see my blush and the color itself is beautiful. And the lip gloss, same. It is perfect for me. Any lip gloss that is pink with like maybe a hint of purple in it is like, it looks amazing on me. I don't know what it is and that's what this has. I've been wearing it in conjunction with this lip liner, which is another favorite and I have some splaining to do, I know. About a month ago, I think it was, I kind of went on this Harouche Benj. I don't know if you guys know who she is. She is a YouTuber. I don't really think you can call her a YouTuber. She's a massive celebrity makeup artist. She works with the Kardashians, um, not exclusively, but a lot of their stuff she does. And I just got caught up in her channel at one point. I even did a makeup tutorial where I tested out tons of her tips, tricks, and techniques. And let me tell you, they're all good. Go watch that video if you kind of want to see in summation her makeup tips and techniques. But Throughout watching her videos, she did talk a lot about the Kardashian makeup products, which I was kind of like, girl, you ain't got a lot of kick it. Like, it's okay. However, she did sell me on these lip liners of Kim Kardashian's. And what she said about them in particular was that she really loved the undertones that Kim went with. And I feel like when you are doing a lip liner that is nude versus something that's colorful. So for example, if I did a red lip, I'd wear a red lip liner. Um, when you're doing nudes, it's not so much that you need to find a lip liner that goes with the nude lipstick. You need to find a nude lip liner that goes with your skin tone or it looks kind of like natural as if the border of your lip would be around this color. And I cannot for the life of me remember why I picked this color. Somebody talked me into it. I don't know what video I saw. I don't know who it was, but somebody talked me into getting nude number two. And because we're in the middle of, you know, what we're in the middle of, I couldn't test it before I bought it because I bought it at Ulta. I got it home, took it out of the package, and I was like, this is brown. There is no way I'm going to be able to pull this off as a nude lip liner. Yep, yep. Not only do I pull it off, but it is my favorite nude. <laughs> Hold on. It used to be Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I still love that one, but I have just been using this so much that I feel like this one's kind of replaced Charlotte Tilbury Iconic Nude. I don't know. I don't know, I'm just saying. Now what I like about this, once again, is the undertone. It is very dark, like compared to my skin, but when I blend it out with my broken ass fingernail, you can just see how it kind of turns into this like natural color. And I don't know if that was the point behind this, if her whole plan was to apply the lip liner and then kind of blend out the edge to get the shade you want, but that's how I use this. And it kind of creates this natural lip line, kind of 90s vibe, but not really. Because in the 90s, we used, not we, I was not around. Don't let me lie. I was not wearing lip liner in the 90s. I was a child. But in the 90s, you kind of saw that like kind of brown lip line with the nude lip. And it it's very dated now, but the modern version of it, I think we're kind of seeing a lot now, is done very easily with something like this. So I just line the lip, kind of get it exactly where I want, and then I just kind of feather out the color until it's a little bit more muted. I still want you to be able to see my lip liner and the fact that I want it to create shape, but it looks so natural. So I've been pairing this with either Heartthrob or Fly Girl, it depends on what vibe I'm feeling, and then topping it with this Dolly lip gloss, it's what I have on today. Love this lip combo, favorite nude lip combo of life. And I'll probably wear this until 2021 because that's just how I am. Let's talk about brows for a second, shall we? Earlier this year, I decided that I was gonna go through a soap brow phase and like some of y'all tried to tell me, I really appreciate you. Some of y'all tried to tell me it looked terrible, but I just, I don't know, man, I wasn't trying to hear it. I thought it was dope. I can already look back at videos that I filmed in like May. And I'm like, usually it takes about a year for me to look back at a makeup style I was into and be like, oh God, oh no. I'm already deeply regret the soap brow. And I would like to formally apologize for making you guys look at it for the few months that I was wearing it. It's just not good for me. My eyebrow hairs don't like to act that way. They go straight down and I could never get them to completely kind of go up, which is what those soap brows are supposed to do. 
Uh, they just would get built up with so much product. It took forever. You really couldn't see my eyebrows. It just wasn't good. So I decided that I wanted to dabble with Dip Brow. This is not a new product whatsoever. This has been around for a long, 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 long time. However, what I will say about it is it's the best eyebrow product ever. And if you learn how to use it, it'll change your life. I don't know where I have been or why I haven't tried this before. Maybe I was intimidated by it. I'm not sure. But what I love about this is it gives you the ability to really draw your eyebrow hair on. So if you're like me and you can't get your eyebrows to naturally have movement because they want to go straight down like so, you can just draw them in. And it doesn't take any more time than any other way I've ever done my brows. I'm not great at it yet. Some days I do it better than others and I'm gonna to continue to get better. I just don't think I'll ever go back or do anything else. In fact, if I was still doing makeup professionally, this is what I would do it with. I don't think I would use anything else. Like maybe a brow gel, but that's it. This is dope. And if you guys have never tried it or intimidated to, you guys know we're finna be up in this house again for a while. So you might as well take the time to learn how to do your brows with this. It'll change your life. And I bet you would have this brow product for, I don't know, you probably could give it to your kids in your will. It will last you forever. Love it. I got a bunch of questions in my recent hooded eye, eye makeup tutorial video asking me to recommend a lash that would look good on hooded eyes. And here's the problem, you guys. All hooded eyes are not created equal. In fact, a lot of people, since I have been on YouTube, have tried to tell me that I do not have hooded eyes, which is hilarious because I do. So that leads me to believe that I don't even have remotely the most kind of hooded eye there is. So I cannot prescribe you a one size fits all lash. I will say that the main tip I gave in my hooded eye video was to look for ones that have a natural curve already to them. Do you see how this lash, the ends of it, right here are turned upwards. I told y'all to look for that. And then a lot of people were telling me that the particular brand I recommended in that video, which was the Eyelore London Lux Silk, this guy was way too big and bodacious and they wanted me to tell them something else that I thought would work just as well. I did leave it, leave and pin a comment in that video, but in case you didn't see it, I did recommend the Kiss Lashes in the style sequin. These are true I'm gonna call them grown folk lashes. They are a little long, but to me, this is a really natural, sophisticated lash. The band is invisible. That was one of the main things you guys were telling me you wanted, that you didn't want a thick band kind of taking up your lid space. This is the thinnest band ever. It's kind of like the Ardell um, Demi Wispy kind of band. Do you see what I mean? How it's like basically nothing. It just pops right on there. They're beautiful. now. I will tell you guys, one of the disadvantages I think of using lashes with these types of thin bands is I don't feel like they have the best reusable wear time, if that makes any sense. Something with a thicker band, in my opinion, just lasts longer. I can wear them over and over again. These kind of lose their shape over time much quicker than a thicker band does. But all that being said, I do still love these. I wear these like when during the day, you know, when I'm going out in the real world as opposed to filming or at nighttime. This is a good everyday lash. I love them. Please don't go get all of them. I need to, I need to order more obviously, but I'll leave them down below. They're beautiful. You'll probably like them. This is the Bumble and Bumble thickening spray and I freaking love this stuff. Oh my gosh. I have been using like mousse. I oh know how 80s is that? for, I don't know, shit, like two years to kind of add a little bit of something into my roots. And it wasn't really doing anything except making my roots crunchy and get dirtier quicker. Like once you have product right in your roots, it just, especially if you're like me and you have oily skin and an oily scalp, it just, you have to wash your hair so much quicker because you've already got buildup starting. But because it's a spray, it doesn't weigh or like cause buildup in your roots, but it is incredibly, incredibly effective. In fact, there's been a couple of times since I bought this that I'll kind of forget to use it. And I can tell a huge difference in kind of how my hair lays, how it acts, all of those things. It is a great, great spray to use in your hair before you blow dry it. With my blow dry routine, this has been a game changer. And speaking of the blow dry routine, I don't even know what this is called. This is like the Revlon hot brush or something. I bought this over a month ago and I cannot shut the F up about it. Everybody that I know in real life, I'm like, 
have you tried these hot brushes? Like, I know it's a big trend right now. I've seen tons of brands come out with them, but I just wanted one of these because if you roll the playback and look at my last favorites video, I think it was like a fall favorites video, I was talking about doing blowouts and how, <sighs> I noticed a difference in my hair, but I'm not very good at them. This has eliminated all of the annoying parts of blowing out your own hair because I don't have to section, well, I don't, I do. I don't have to use hot rollers. I don't have to use Velcro rollers. I don't have to use a round brush. It just does the whole thing for you. I can't really use it right now because right, I'm going to do it anyway. Forget it. So it just is like what you think it is. You know, when you're blow drying your hair, you can just sit here and kind of manipulate it however you want to kind of give your hair whatever bend you want. If you want it to flip out, if you want it to flip under, if you just want to focus on those roots and get that lift, your hair is smooth and shiny and styled and it looks like you got your hair done. I used to just blast my hair with a hair dryer and call it a day. Like I said, I'm trying to get better at doing my hair, so I don't really do that anymore. And I don't think I'll ever have to again because this is easy, quick, effect. It works so good, you guys. I know lots of brands, like I said, wow, why is my shirt like this? Holy crap. I know a lot of brands are coming out with these. Some of them I have seen are $200 and up. I cannot attest to whether there's any reason for that. I'm not a hair professional. I know this one was $50 and it works gangbusters i'm thinking about getting my sister one of these for christmas because she has curly well no i don't want her to straighten her curly hair because it's beautiful i might get it for her anyway this is great great gift idea great gift it to yourself idea you'll use it all the time it'll change your life I'm trying to tell you something all right guys that is the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it and as always a like as a little bit wrong Live streams are going on. I think the last one we have in November is next week. I wanted to get them over with before the holidays in case we were all tied up. And the book club this month, we are reading The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. I will do a video over here sometime before the month is over kind of explaining why I think everyone should read that book, especially right before the new year. If you're kind of trying to get into that new year, new me bag, that's a great book to get you ready for it. So all that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, check the down bar for links on my social media platforms. Subscribe if you have not. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.